I've been playing a lot of Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay, okay, um, you know I have to ask you. <laughs> what are the animations like? Did they fix it? Because I saw some videos that looked pretty absurd. So, if they did fix it, I haven't, like, I, I'm not aware if they fixed it or not. What I've noticed well, is yeah, I not... think you'd be aware if they didn't fix it, because those videos looked crazy. They are crazy, um, but, <laughs> I don't know, it, 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 they're not, it's not all that, like, because the videos make it look really glitchy. If anything, mm. it's just doesn't synchronize, and it's not, like, the correct facial expressions for the tone of the... Well, like, what I saw, like, there just weren't any facial expressions or anything, and, like, people were walking around all crazy and bow-legged. Like, it didn't look, it didn't look real. Like, it didn't look like a game studio made it. It looked like some, like, student experiment. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It was so funny. Yeah, there, it's, it's, I've not encountered too many points where I'm like, okay, that's ridiculous. It's a lot of just, like, this is noticeable. It's noticeably bad. That's so, such a shame. And and more so than the animations at some points, it's the textures of the faces that are really weird. Huh. So like they're they're all really matte, but also not detailed. Whereas in the previous Mass Effects, they were shiny because human skin is shiny a lot of time, um, <laughs> and also very detailed. So you could see like complexion and marks and and everything, which. Yeah. Some people might not like, but I thought it was sort of their style. Okay, yeah. But this is the opposite of that. It's like, <laughs> I, I, some some video person or, or podcast person said they looked like Sims 3 characters. and they totally... Oh my god, like those puffy faces? Yes, they do. And it's, and it's also sad because some of the Asari, the blue, the blue alien yeah. race, they don't look as good either. And it's... What happened? And like, I, why is it of such lower quality than the previous Mass Effect games? I, I honestly think they started from scratch rather than building on what they had. And another, I was just watching a, a review from uh, Total Biscuit, the Cynical Brit. Um, mm. And he had like an hour, 45 minute review of it or first impressions or whatever. And he said, he was, he was remarking on how beautiful the environments are. <laughs> and he, it, he's not wrong. Like, the environments are gorgeous, and they take up a lot of the gameplay. But those faces... Well, yeah, like, what I've seen just looks super garbage. It's really a shame, because I love Mass Effect. And I'm not loving some of the ways they're dealing with the story. So, like, it's a lot of first contact situations, because they're in a new galaxy. Hmm. And after having just watched and fell in love with Arrival, which is all about, like, first contact with aliens and having to understand each other's languages and how unique of a take that was on the first contact sort of storyline. This is all just like, Oh, we all have uh, translators uh, built into our little comm system thing. So we can all understand each other off the bat. Mm. Sounds a little bit it Star is, Trek. It is. And, it, and it's, it's kind of lazy in that way. Like not having, not dealing with those harder issues. Hmm. But it's also sort of nostalgic for the Star Trek because you're doing a lot of exploring and these new worlds and and you're not like a military person in this one you're sort of an, an explorer and that's fun. Yeah. But it's yeah. also really weird because the main character, actually that's the one thing they got right so far is the main character doesn't know what the heck they're doing and they let you know that and sometimes that's kind of like the awkward dialogue is like they'll make a joke when they shouldn't be because they're not professional. <laughs> That's like this, cute. Exactly. Like it's uncomfortable some at some points, but you're like, yeah, they shouldn't know what they're doing, so it it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I just um I really loved the the Mass Effect trilogy. Like, I guess I just as a side note, like when I you know when I was first sort of playing and the whole like you can romance a crew member thing came up. Like, it first just sort of came up naturally, um, because I'm, I'm, I love Garrus. Like, he's a great guy. He's, like, such a great friend. And so I was just talking to him, and then things got all romantic. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you can romance them. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, wait. But, like, 
I think I like the sniper guy better. <laughs> and I, you know what I'm talking about? The the bug guy with like the with the disease. I can't think of his name right now. It starts with oh, a T. Oh. Uh, his his race is, is a drell. He's a drell. Yeah, but he's I, he's a guy. He's got like the terminal disease. Yes, I yes, I, like I know. Him too. He's my he's my boyfriend. He's my space boyfriend, and I can't remember his name. <laughs> but I was like, oh no, I think I prefer him. So I went to go romance him, and I was like, I gotta turn Garrus down. Oh God, like, and I felt so so bad <laughs> because have... like you go in there and you're like, hey Garrus, so about that thing that happened, like we should probably keep our relationship professional, and he's like. Oh, yeah, it's totally, sh- like, you're right, sorry, Shepard, <laughs> um, yeah, and he's, like, really disappointed and awkward, and I felt terrible, because he's my best friend, but, oh, it was a disaster. <laughs> I, I've, I've had a lot of, I have a lot of opinions regarding the romance options in Mass Effect Andromeda. I, first of all, there are no, if you're playing as the male lead, there are no male aliens you can romance. Oh, come on, guys. Which, like, before I got the game, I was constantly tweeting about, like, which of these aliens from the trailer can I, can it be my boyfriend? Like, uh, like, I want to date the giant worms that are on the planet. Like, anything. <laughs> because I've, there's, there have been notoriously limited options in the past installments. Yeah, but at least uh, they were there. Yeah, and and by the third one we did have Caden and and he was at least a crew member. In this, you can't. There's no gay crew member either. Mm. So my two, op- I have two options, both human. Neither of them I can take onto planets with me. Mm. Which is it's I I don't like it because you, you get closest with the crew members that you can take with you. They have more options dialogue wise. Oh, there's just more there. They're, 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 they're more of a full character. And, and there's a couple of the characters I absolutely love. Like, um, one, I was joking that I almost considered romancing the female Turian crew member. Because <laughs> she's so likable. And she's, she's, she's not like a caricature like some of the other characters are. Mm hmm. She's witty, but she's not, like, ridiculous. Yeah. And then there is another human who is a crew member. His name's Liam. And he is just so goofy and likable. But and, just like, you, not you, gay. You, he's not gay. And you go, to the, you go to the flirt button and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm just not in, I'm not, like, not that way. And it's just so, <sighs> and he's so, like, he is the epitome of queer baiting. Oh no! Really? Whereas, yeah, he's like always shirtless and doing push-ups, and and he's like he's incredibly likable, and it and I and I I don't know I I get that it's sort of a like you can still have a really good relationship as friends, yeah. but it's just he's he's well, adorable I'm... as a character. To flip that though, I mean, it, it is a shame that they're not putting enough queer characters in the games like that's that's cruddy and and inexcusable but like at least you know so then this character is supposed to be appealing to women and it's like well okay at least you got this like cute shirtless boy like you know sexing it up for the ladies and that's that's less common as far as like video game romances like marketing themselves to you yeah and i think there are there are definitely some good options for um queer women in, in this one, there you can date. I, of course, I that's say at least, far less at threatening least, to male gamers. <laughs> at least, two, at least two or three alien women you can romance. Um, as yeah, a woman. And, yeah, as a woman. Uh, but I think all, all of the aliens that you can romance as a woman that are women are also romanceable as a man. So they're all bi. Well, of course they are, um, but the guys can't the, be. The, the only exclusively gay woman is a human which is not like the worst thing but again it's the sort of thing where like it's mass effect you want to date an alien yes what's the point what's the point of mass effect if you're not dating an alien exactly (laughs) oh boy anyway that's like a total tangent away from anything we were planning on discussing but it's been a big part of my life for the last like six days It, it, 
yeah, like I'll just say, like a lot of the issues with the most recent season, um, which I guess is season four, um, it's just it's just so contrived. Like people don't behave like they ought to behave just in order to manufacture tension and peril, and <gasps> it's super duper frustrating. And it's just that's. Mm, that's just what they're doing these days, and it's really disappointing. Like, without giving anything away, if you ever do decide you want to get around to watching it, there's a scene very early on where Mycroft and John and Sherlock are in the flat, and they're just standing around talking, and just as slow as they go, this drone flies on in, and they're like, what? And they're just watching it, and it flies on in, and it sets itself down on the floor in the middle of the three of them only at that point does anyone say oh that's a drone with a grenade on it and that grenade is motion activated so the moment any of us move we get exploded and it's like you had like 30 years while this thing was landing to identify it and do something (laughs) about it like john you are a soldier you know what this is sherlock you are a genius you know what this is mycroft you own the company that manufactures them you know what this is why did nobody say anything or do anything until the damn thing landed just so that they're in this pickle where they're like okay what are we gonna do we gotta plan this out i'll jump for the window you go for the door mrs hudson's downstairs someone has to go and grab her like why didn't they address it sooner just i mean drones move really really slow like i have one and it's not (laughs) fast and this thing moves as slowly as the one that i have like it's just a little helicopter guy the the little ones don't have a lot of power (laughs) And it's got this very obvious grenade. They're able to identify it once it lands. So, like, they should have known what to do already. Like, someone says, get out of the flat, and they run. But no, no, they just stand there stupid looking at it until it lands. And it's it's just like, come on, this was supposed to be Smart Guys show. Like, this is stupid and contrived. Oh, that's disappointing. But that is so not what we're talking about. I just had to do that. Sharp teeth, test your skin.